Hello, my fourth grade friends. Today we are doing Unit 2, Lesson 5, which is on page 55 in your books. So go ahead and get that out and let's get started. The topic of the lesson and video today is about using estimation to give yourself an idea of like where your answer probably should be. This is really important because it helps kids and adults quickly check their work and see like, ooh, whoops, I like totally forgot about the 100 or something. And identify mistakes easily without having to go through tons and tons of work. Um, and also sort of mentally preparing for what kind of answer you'll, you'll be dealing with. It's also really helpful if um, you don't need to be super pre precise or as specific or exact, you can just sort of get a vague idea of the number that you need and then go from there. Um, so let's see what it says. We're talking about estimating, which is like a smart guess, and rounding, which is when you bring a number to the nearest whatever indicated place value, like 10, 100, 1,000, by looking at the previous digit in the place value, the digit in the previous place value, and asking yourself, is it five or more? And if it is five or more, you bring that place value that you're rounding up to the next one. If it's four or less, you keep it at the place value where it was earlier. You're letting it rest, basically. So we say five or more, let it soar. Four or less, let it rest. That's like a little rhyme to help you remember which direction to go. You're never going to bring a place value, though, down beneath the place value where it already is. So if it was like 40, like 42, if you're rounding that to the nearest 10, it's either 50 or 40. It's never going to be 30 because... You're already in 40, right? So it wouldn't make sense to pass through 40 down to 30. That's not the nearest one for sure. Um, okay, so let's read what it says here. It is easier to estimate the product of two of a two-digit number and a one-digit number when you think about the two multiples of 10 close to the two-digit number. This is shown in the drawings below. So here we're dealing with four times 68. Um, and so you can think, okay, what about 4 times 70, which is pretty close to 68, and that would come out to this, like, black bar, dashed bar here. And then you could also think, well, what's 4 times 60, which is this green bar here, and 4 times 68 would be right in between in this area model. So it's adding a whole 10, or adding 8, or not adding anything at all to the 60. Right? So if you think 4 times 70, all you have to do is do 4 times uh, four times 7 and then multiply it by 10. 4 times 7 is 28, multiply by 10, 280. 4 times 60, just do 4 times 6 and then multiply that by 10. So 4 times 6 200, is 24, so 4 times 60 is 240. Now. That's useful because you can expect your answer to be somewhere in between 280 and 240. Probably a lot closer to 280. Why? Because 8 is a lot closer to 10 than 0, right? 10. All right, let's look at this one with 63, 4 times 63. If we had 4 times 70, that's all the way out here. Not that. Uh, dashed black bar that would be 60 plus 10 or 60 plus 0 which would be right here and then 60 plus 3 right there 63 so you know that again it'll be between 280 and 240 but what would it be closer to probably closer to 240 because 3 is a lot closer to that additional 0 than that additional 10 Right, so it's probably maybe like 250-ish or something, um, but not super close to 280. So it says right here, in each drawing, find the rectangles that represent 4 times 70 and 4 times 60. We just did that. So the 4 times 70 goes all the way out to here, um, and the 4 times 60 goes to here, right here. Okay. Um, these rectangles frame the rectangles for 4 times 68 and 4 times 60. And I want to just address here, I was a little bit confused looking at this, but just imagine like 
they've stacked these on top of each other because they're not separate rectangles. Um, they're sort of layered on top of each other. Okay, I think that helped me understand it. So find the values for 4 times 70 and 4 times 60. We've done that already. So 4 times 7 is 28. So 4 times 70 is? 280, good. 4 times 6, 24. 4 times 60 is 240. And okay, now look at the rectangle that represents 4 times 68. Is 4 times 68 closer to 4 times 60 or 4 times 70? Get that already? This line right here, is it closer to the 70 line or closer to the 60 line? What do you think? To the 70 line. So is 4 times 68 closer to 240 or 280? Closer to which one? 280, right? Because it's closer to, you know, 4 times 70. Okay, now look at the rectangle that represents the 4 times 63. Is 4 times 63 closer to the 4 times 60 or the 4 times 70? I want you to write what you think right here. And then answer is 4 times 63 closer to 240 or 280? And write that right there. Okay? I'm going to go now. Ready? The 60. It is closer to the... 240. All right, now let's think about this. Explain how to use rounding to estimate the product of one digit number and a two digit number. Think about it. Okay. Your answer might be a little bit different than mine, but it should be pretty similar. I'm going to write round the two-digit number to the nearest ten. Then multiply the one digit number by the two digit number. It should be close to the real answer. And that's important to remember. When you're rounding and estimating, you're getting something close. You're not getting the exact answer. So just keep that in mind. All right. Turn the page. We will think about on these two problems how rounding and estimation could help solve these problems. Okay, I'll read this one out loud. Keisha School has 185 fourth grade students. The library has two or 28 tables with six chairs at each table. Can all of the fourth graders sit in the library at one time? How do you know? And let me tell you, as a teacher, sometimes we will think about this, you know, like if we got a certain number of classes, we all want to do this thing in the library or in the NPR or something like that. And we think about like, will everybody fit or should we break it up? And rather than doing the whole math, you can do some quick estimation and figure it out. So let's see if I think about six times two and six times three, I can round this to either 20 or 30. It really does round to 30. Um, let's see. So let's start with 6 times 30. Uh, so that would be 6 times 3 is 18 times 10, 180. 
So even if they had like an extra half table somewhere, which they don't, right? Or if they had two more tables, I should say, if they had two more tables, they still would not have enough for 185 students. So do they have enough now? No, right? So let's write that down. Uh, no, even if they had two more tables, put in parentheses, that would be 30 times six, they would not have enough Okay, let's look at this next one. Amina is printing the class newspaper. There are eight pages in the newsletter, or I said newspaper newsletter, and she needs 74 copies. Each package of paper contains 90 sheets. How many packages of paper does she need to print the newsletter? So, let's see. You do eight times seven, but she's gonna need a little bit more than that, right? Because if she lowballs it and like guesses under, she's gonna end up running out of paper, right? So let's go a little bit higher just in case the printer jams or something like that. So let's do eight times 80 and then she'll have extra. Eight times 80, well eight times eight is 64. And so 8 times 80 is 640. Each package contains 90 sheets. So in one package, there's 90. In two packages, there's 180. In three packages, 270. In four packages, 360. In five packages, there's 450 pages or sheets. In Six packages, 540. In seven packages, 630. In eight packages, 720. So 630 might be enough, but it, she'd be better off having um, eight packages. So should get eight pages just to be sure she does not run out. Okay. Now, let's do a little estimating practice, and then that'll be on the top line, and then we'll solve on the bottom line. So if you're feeling good, let's do the first one together, and then if you're feeling good, you can move ahead of me. So three times, if you round 50 to the near, 52 to the nearest 10, it's 50. So three times 50 equals 150. So three times 52 would be uh, 156. Right, because you're adding two more groups of three to that. You can draw your little area model. E two. Alright, so then three times fifty-two is one hundred and fifty-six. Nine times twenty-seven, so nine times thirty, twenty-seven rounded to the nearest ten is thirty. Nine times three is um 27 so then that'd be 270 but that's a little bit high nine times two times 20 would be 180 and then nine times uh, kind of small nine times seven is 63 then we have 180 plus 63, 3, 14, 2. So that would be 9 times 20. 
7 equals 243. 8 times 35. So I'll draw my little rectangle here. 30 plus 5, 8. 8 times 3 is 24, so 8 times 30 is 240. 8 times 5, 40. That's actually kind of easier just to do it up, but that's okay. So 8 times 40, round that to the nearest 10, would be 320. And then 8 times 35 would be 280. Okay, oh, I realized I should have gone over here, but I just went down. That's fine, doesn't matter. All right, let's do this one. Seven times 48. 40 and eight, seven. Seven times four is 200, or sorry, seven times four is 28, times 10, 280. Seven times eight is 56. 280 plus. Oh, I lined that up wrong. 280 plus 56. 0 plus 6. 6. 8 plus 5. 13. So the real answer equals 336. Our estimated answer, 7 times 50, would be like 350, right? Okay, 8 times 30 would be 240. And then adding 8 times it in a box. I really like this box method. I didn't learn it as a kid. And I think it's super cool. Alright, so that's 240. And then 8 times 4 is... Uh, two, and then adding those together, eight, four equals 272. Last one, here we go. Five times 20 is 100. Five, two, so that's 100. Five times Two is ten, so five times twenty two equals one hundred ten. All right, you guys, check and see if you have an assignment, but thank you so much for joining me. Again, my name is Mrs. Smith, and I'll catch you next time. Bye bye.